In this modeling speed run, I'm going to share the workflow that I used to model Amazing Whale Java Station project designed by NIO Architects. We'll be modeling this project mainly with subd tools, and I'll show you some additional tips and tricks on how to add surfacing details at the end. Let's start. First, import the drawing. Adjust and trim the image. Start with a single subd surface, extend it to cover the whole shape. Adjust each individual vertex. Add some additional edges where needed. Use stitch command to connect them. Extend the small edge and add some additional edges. Make an inset edge around the whole shape using insert point. Select the inner surfaces and move them down. I realized here that I needed a sharper edge. Select edge ring and add insert edge close to the corner. Reposition the topology a bit in order to make the small mountain. Insert an additional edge at the bottom so we can have a sharper corner. Once again, use insert point to create an edge all around the bottom surface. Select all inner surfaces and use insert command to get more divisions on the inside. Select the inner edge, bring it up to make the height, modify it a bit and fix the corners so we get a nice smooth transition. It was too tall, so I decided to make it flatter by adding some additional edges on the side and adjusting the height once again, and then fixing the corners as well. Here I noticed that the gutter was too wide, so I decided to fix that by bringing all of the edges from the middle towards the edge. This took some time, but at the end, I got the result I was looking for. Now it's time to extrude the outer edge to give a bit more thickness to our roof. I connected the bottom parts by using bridge command and also added some more edges near the end so we can properly connect this extension part. We fixed the height, added an edge loop and now we are ready to expand our roof. I started to play with the side extension that is supposed to lower down to the ground and meet with the roof somewhere halfway. One cool command that I used here was gumball alignment and it allowed me to position the vertices better and extend the whole element to the ground. Now I started to create the rough shape near the end and moved it to the ground level and made some additional edges so I can connect it with my side extension by deleting these two polygons and using the one and only, yeah, you guessed it, bridge command. After that, I wanted to create an edge in the middle of the roof so we can create required curvature. A very cool trick I used here was to select two edges that will make the edge ring and then hold Alt, Shift and Control and double click on the inner edge. That will select a complete edge ring that I need to only use insert edge. Then we double click to select this edge and scale it out. I deleted the excess edges and scaled the middle edge even further out and made sure that it is exactly in the middle of the roof height. After this, I started playing with the back part. I tried adding some additional edges and moving vertices and surfaces in order to get that rounded shape. Now comes the part where I started extruding the surfaces on the opposite side and tried to make a rough shape of the room with the extruded bench. Somewhere around here I decided to change the color of the layer because I realized it was really tense in my eyes. I should have done it much sooner. After that I took out some of the extruded polygons in order to make a similar wall design. I quickly realized here that I have to extend the bench a lot more because the proportions were not right, so I had to add some more details and edges in order to modify the top area as well as the middle one. I moved the bottom roof edge a bit down so everything looks a bit more proportional and then it was about time I tried to fix that extension that looks like a weird noodle. I used gumball lime into object command here so I can easily scale these surfaces and then just fix them up near the ends. I did the same exact thing to the part that was on the ground. I noticed that this part was way too thicker than I initially thought, so my next task was to try to recreate this area and add and extrude more polygons. Then I spent some more time on this part to get it to look as close as possible to the project based on the images we had. It turned out pretty good, I would say. At this point, I started to focus on the connection between our noodle and the roof. The connection was supposed to happen exactly below the point where they would intersect, so that was my area of focus here. I repositioned the noodle a bit, made the top part flatter and aligned it properly. I had a problem here, because I didn't have the matching polygon that I can connect to, so the workaround was to add some more edges in this area and fuse this part together 
using the bridge command. The connection was garbage at the beginning, but after some modifications and edge cleaning, it was much better than in real life. Here I noticed that we have to have much softer transition, so I made a couple of additional edges to solve that issue. Now we'll focus on the room area and try to fix it up a little bit. I removed some polygons to get the proper room size and stitched the surfaces back together. Fine tuning has started. Here I'm trying to figure out the best angles going from the roof leading to the bottom. When I was inspecting the overall geometry, there were a couple of last touch modifications. One of them was the inner wall that needed to be a bit narrower. Then I saw some additional details that required fixing like this connection with the roof. And this inner area wasn't straight, but had some curvature to it. We are now ready to go to the font part, which means finishing sub modeling process and converting our model to polysurface. Here I uncovered the bottom layer and created the pavement support. To be honest, I'm not really sure why I created this, because I never used it later on. I made a backup layer for this sub D, as now we're planning on converting it to polysurface, so I always like to keep the backup sub D just in case I mess something up later. It turns out I did. Then I created an extended plane, which I will use to cut the base of the project. Before cutting, I had to move everything just a tiny bit down, and once that is done, I used boolean split to make the cut and delete the bottom parts. Now we converted our sub D into polysurface. If you're interested to see a complete uninterrupted tutorial of this project, which is around 4 hours long, you can go to our Patreon page and check it out. With that, you will get access to all of our extended tutorials and project files. The link is in the description. The next phase of the project was to create details on our polysurface. Add the insets, doors and a couple of windows. The first thing I did here is create a rough sketch of all of the openings from the side views. Extruded those curves in 3D so I can see how they will be projected on the polysurface. I did the same thing for all possible openings, doors in the back and windows in the front area. Now comes the part where we need to drill these holes and make some nice fillets. The first one on the list was the biggest one and gave me the most trouble. First I had to intersect those two polysurfaces and then I tried splitting this polysurface with the intersection line. Here, I had to rebuild the surface and it wasn't as easy as I initially thought. I even had to reshoot this part of the video a couple of times. First, I took the top edge, projected it on the bottom, rebuilt it, divided it, drew some perpendicular curves, extended them a bit, extruded them, and then I created the horizontal lines, extruded them, and now I used intersect two sets command to get intersected lines for both vertical and horizontal surfaces. At this point, we can do patch to get a nice surface. However, even when I increase the divisions, offset surface gave me very weird result. So I decided to try a different approach. I rebuilt the surface once more and copied in the back. And then simply use sweep 1 to connect the two surfaces. Then I simply used the same method to do all the other openings. But there I didn't have any problems with the surfaces and was able to offset them with no problems. Then came this glass window. Same story here, but I wanted to create a frame for it here, so I did offset surface and used that to split the cutout piece one more time and use that to make a window frame. I used the exact same method to do all of the other openings. And the last thing here was to create the fillets. I used mostly fillet edge command to create the filleted edges with various radiuses. There was a lot of testing here and going back and forth until I was happy with all of the fillets. The next thing to model were lights. So I started with drawing a simple line from the bottom view and then I converted those curves to closed curves, which I used after to split the roof area where the lights would fit in. I extruded up these areas and cleaned them up a bit. Then I created an inclination by using sweep 2 to create a cut surface and then simply use split command to separate it. And we got ourselves a complete area for the lights. Creating the lights was easy. It was just a matter of selecting an edge and using pipe command to give it some thickness. And we have our light source. This was the last thing to model, this front gate. 
that was pretty easy. I just went on the side view, drew a rough shape, made fillets, positioned it in 3D to see if it fits and how it looks. Once I positioned it properly, I created the surface and extended it a bit, used it to get intersection curves and then drew my final shape in 2D. This 2D shape became 3D frame and glass with a thickness. After that, I created the extrusions or these frame candles that would attach to the roof and to the ground and would hold our glass frame in place. And we are all done. If you're an architect and you're looking to quickly learn round and glass hopper, we have a completely free training on our website that's going to help you discover and learn the core principles of Rhino, the basic logic behind Grasshopper, and you'll find out what these tools are capable of in architecture. Go check it out, the link is in the description.